Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab and another restoration video. Let's get started. This has been my test speaker for quite some time now, and yes, it definitely is uh, not a very pretty looking speaker, is it? So I've been uh, telling myself, okay, you know, I'm going to get to this thing and I'm going to clean this up or repaint it or do something to it because it's just, uh, it's pretty hideous on the bench. And I have a feeling that I'm going to use this thing on the other test bench as well. So I think it's about time that uh, we do something about this. Look at this thing. Yuck. So I think it needs a paint job and uh, a bunch of cleaning up. So let's take a look what's inside. It's uh, been a very, very long time, maybe 12 years since I've even looked in here. I think at one time there may have been some newspaper or something in here just holding a speaker. I think the speaker's just rattling around in there. I've never really given it much thought. It just sounded really good the way it was. So uh, when I had this, when I got this thing, uh, I didn't have any clips on it. So I put some alligator clips on it so I could just clip it onto things. And uh, I never really did spend the time to do anything with this. So as I say, it just sounded good. So let's see what's inside. I have a feeling it might be something scary. So uh, I remember something. It may have been a different speaker that I took apart that had uh, paper inside of it. I don't know. Let's, uh, let's find it. It's been a while. Hopefully this is the way it does come apart. I think it comes apart like this. I got all the screws out. I did. There we go. Yeah, definitely not something you'd want to be using your fingernails on. Take your fingernail off. Oh no, it's actually not bad in here. The speaker is loose though. So it looks like somebody has at some time replaced the speaker. It's just kind of floating around in here, which I, I guess is okay. Maybe that's part of the reason it sounds so good. It's because it's actually not tightened to the face. So there is a little bit of area for air travel in here. I really don't know. So it looks like it has something in here just to push it tight against this rim here. So I might actually just put another piece of thick foam here and just so when I put the back on it presses this in like this and it'll probably sound great. Again, the speaker just sounds fantastic the way it is. But boy, is it ugly. So uh, that's what's inside this thing. You know, this, uh, you know, that's it. So I have a feeling it just, as I say, it just was, I don't know if, the, if this is the fact. Yeah, it must be because there's no mounting in here or anything. And the speaker's in really nice condition too. Dirty, very, very dirty. So I, as I say, I don't, I don't see any mounting inside this thing at all. Like, I mean, it's just, it looks like it's just been, you know, pressed in here. So yeah, must be the way the thing was put together, I guess. So what I'll do is I'll desolder the speaker and take this thing out. And then what we'll do is head out to the shop and uh, get rid of some old paint. How about that? Let's do that. Let's glass bead blast this case. I've got the cabinet here, and I think we'll probably start with the uh, the back side of the cabinet first. We'll glass bead blast this first. So I'll just put this down over here. So this is going to end up in that machine right there, and that's a, a glass bead blaster. The uh, median side of it is very small glass beads. I guess uh, the best size comparison I could say would be table salt is actually what it looks like. If you were to look into the hopper, it actually looks like table salt, but it's glass beads. So this will end up in there, but first I need to start up the compressor and get everything going, get the compressor charged up so uh, you can experience all the shop noises with me. And if you have a full ranged audio system, it'll sound like you're right here. So let's make this happen. All right, so here we go. <laughs> So this hose isn't charged up right now. There is no air in this. I have to turn on the air on the compressor to let this charge up. And uh, the reason that I do that is because this is a really, really big hose. And um, yeah, it's violent if it pops off. 
so I get everything all hooked up and solid first, and then I'll end up turning on the air. I'll explain more about that in just a moment. So here we go. That hissing that you hear is the, uh, the bleed-off valve for the heads of the compressor. It makes that hissing noise. It's not an air leak. So, okay, so I'll pop this on here. I guess I could uh, actually show you this, this hose here. Okay, so the size of it. So this right here, you can see how big this is. You can see I can pretty much stick my thumb in this thing. So a lot of shop guys are very tempted to uh, release the air hose from the manifold without letting the air out of the hose first. And that's extremely dangerous with a hose this size. Uh, you can go deaf. In fact, it can tear skin. It's that incredibly bad. I think all shop guys have done it and uh, we've all made that mistake at some point. So if you're ever installing an air system, it's always a good idea to stall, install two valves. One to shut the air off to the hose and another valve like I have over here to, to bleed the air out of the hose before you disconnect it. Uh, if you don't do that, you can cause yourself some extreme damage. And um, yeah, if you're getting into air or you're gonna ever get into any kind of shop accessories, uh, this is kind of like standard uh, you know, I guess you could say shop knowledge. So uh, never ever release an air hose when it's charged up from a manifold. All right. Uh, again, don't ask me how I know this. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on here. And so I found that with the, so the smaller air hoses, the smaller air hoses, they're not as violent. This is extremely violent if you let it off. And depending on the pressure that's in that hose too, there's a, this is pressure regulated. But uh, if the pressure is extremely high, you know, it can cause really big problems. Okay, so now what I need to do is make sure the valve is shut so that I don't bleed air out. And then I'm gonna turn the, the shop air on to the, uh, the glass bead blaster. Okay, so now this is charged up. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'll turn this on here. And I'll put this inside the, the glass bead blaster. All right, so this will go inside here. We'll do this one later. All right, so these are the gloves. Okay. And then there's also a, a safety switch in the actual door here so that I, I can't step on the pedal down here and uh, turn on the glass beads while the door is open because that, again, is another very, very scary scenario. So let's see, what else can I tell you about this? So, so there's a lamp on here. There's a lamp that lights it up so you can see, and there's a vacuum in the back. So, so what the vacuum does is because when you're glass bead blasting, and of course that's all circulating around in there, it gets really dusty and uh, you can almost not see inside the glass here anymore, right? So uh, what this does is this vacuums the dust and pulls air through the unit. There's an air intake down here and it pulls air through the unit and uh, goes through a filter in the back, of course, so you don't get dust and everything all over the shop. And of course it filters it out so you're not breathing the stuff in, right? and uh, filters all of that out and uh, it keeps the cabinet clean so it doesn't fog up. So if, without that thing on, I could probably glass bead blast for about 15 seconds and then you're kind of tilting the component or whatever you have in there looking at it to try and see because you, you just can't see. It just turns into this big dusty fog inside here. Uh, a lot of uh, different types of glass bead blasters, the smaller ones will have a little pipe on the side that perfectly fits a shop vac hose. There you go, right? So you, you hook your shop back up and it pulls it out. Uh, one thing, another safety precaution, if you're ever gonna try and uh, glass bead blast or sand blast, they're usually called sand blasters, all right? And I, I try to uh, call it a glass bead blaster. More often than not, I forget a lot of the time and just keep calling it a sand blaster. But uh, if you ever get one of these things, don't think that you can use regular sand in these things because regular sand has, uh, it's a silica type sand. Most sands are, they're high in silica. So if you breathe in any kind of dust from that for any length of time or just breathe the dust from regular sand, uh, of course, that can lead to a thing called silicosis. So you got to be very, very careful. You want to make sure that you're wearing all the uh, appropriate safety precautions when you're glass bead blasting and definitely never breathe the dust, whether it's glass beads, uh, whether you're using slag, whether you're using walnuts, whether you're using any type of sand, never breathe the dust. It's uh, really, really, really harmful. Any type of, any kind of exposure to that can really, you know, really cause a lot of issues, right? Okay, so 
enough of the warnings and stuff. Just want to fill you in on these things. If you're ever planning on getting a glass bead blaster, definitely read all the instructions and look into it before you do any kind of blasting. And of course, then there's the paint that you're taking off too, right? You know, the, the chemicals and that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the camera and I'll focus you in here so that you can see what I'm looking at. And uh, let's take some paint off. All right, let's do some glass bead blasting here. So I'm going to turn on the vax. It's going to get noisy again. Again, enjoy the shop noises with me. Here we go. I'll put my hands in the gloves, like so. And step on the paddle. And away we go. See that? See how quickly that cleans up. It's amazing how quickly that comes off. Spend a little bit more time with the rusty areas. Still, you can see it's just, it's, I'll just stop here for a moment. You can see that? It's all bare metal right here. So it's nice and clean. Got all that in there. That's what it looks like, by the way. In fact, if I do that again, you can see what it looks like. You see, it really does look like table salt. So, so that's what it looks like right there. And that's just little glass beads is all that is. So this is almost all done. This is how quickly it's going. You can see how quickly that paint's coming off. You can really sweep it quick. And then I can spend some time with a rust. That is pretty much all. There's no paint on the top of this thing anymore. So now it's just basically spending some time with the rusty areas. You see that? Areas that are a little bit deeper. See that? Hopefully you can see that. A little too much glare. So there's still paint on the edges that can work at. So I'll keep going at this and I'll, I'll pop the other one in there and I'll show you that one here in just a moment as well. The speaker cabinet itself is now inside the machine. So I'll turn on the back and let's take some paint off this. Here we go. See the little spot welds.
you know your compressor is doing good when it keeps up under full sandblasting. So I just got to go around the edges here and I uh, get the sides done and everything like that too. Lots of paint here to remove so I'll get all of this out of the way and then we'll put some hammer tone paint on this. And that's about as clean as it's gonna get. So I've worked away at the rust on this for quite some time now, and uh, that is down to bare metal. So basically after this, all I do is I take some compressed air and uh, I'll blow all the, the glass out of the inside of it, and then I'll take some brake cleaner and uh, wipe down the metal, and then it's pretty much ready for paint at that point, just that easy. Some of you might be wondering what this is on here, and uh, some of you might be saying, why do you leave tape on the window? Well, this is a piece of plastic on the inside of the glass, because the glass is bouncing around it inside here so much, it'll end up uh, diffusing or fogging the actual glass that you look through into the machine. So you have to put this kind of a, a sacrificial piece of plastic on the inside that gets taped to the inside of the window to stop the window from getting diffused or fogging up. And that's what that's there for. I don't know if you can see this right here. It peeled away a little bit here and some of the the glass bead actually went down in here and it's laying in here right now so I'll have to get that out of here and then put some just standard tape, take some standard tape and put some tape back on here to hold that back up again. I'm ready to start painting the box here and the camera is a long ways away from this just due to overspray. I don't want to get any overspray on it. I have a telephoto lens on this so hopefully you can see this. This is just the uh, Rust-Oleum paint that I'm going to end up using. It's a universal type hammered paint and it's a dark color. I didn't really like the gray. I kind of like the charcoal -y kind of black looking hammer tone better and it'll go a lot better with my equipment. It just blends better. So what I'm going to do is start painting this. You can see it goes on really thick and really fast. And I like to add multiple layers of this. So it goes on really, really thick. It's already starting to look really nice. It's really getting that hammer tone look to it. So I'll just keep going with this. And when this is all done, I'll show you exactly what's happening here. Yeah, it's already getting a really nice looking finish. While I'm waiting for the freshly repainted enclosure to cure up, I think what I'm going to do is replace this speaker cable as well. As you can see, the speaker cable is looking kind of nasty and the, the color of the cable is somewhat the same color as the old case. So since the freshly repainted speaker enclosure is painted black now, I have this really nice looking black cable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace this with a longer length of this, which makes it easier for me to put the actual test speaker on the ground or on the floor beside the bench so I don't have to have it right beside me. So in some cases, depending on what you're testing, it is nice to have that speaker further away from you, especially if you're working on something that could just randomly make a loud noise. So having a, a nice long piece of you know lead-in wire to the speaker is desirable in some cases. So that's what I'm gonna do. So what I'll do is I will remove these alligator clips, which is really quite easy. All you have to do really is hold it open and slide the boot back and uh, at that point what I'll do is I'll just desolder this here and I probably have to open this up and put the new wires in and solder them up so I'll get that new wire prepared and then we'll take a look at the speaker the speaker I'm pretty sure is just fine it probably just needs to be de-dusted so we'll take a closer look at that I'll get the whole thing all put back together and I'll show you how the whole thing looks reassembled the new speaker cable is assembled and I left myself some extra lead length here to the clips just in case I have to clip these far apart. So I just put some heat shrink tubing on here to make things a little bit more rigid, especially where the outer jacket has been taken off. So this comes over, the outer jacket ends about here. You can see that there. And then uh, this just runs over a little bit just to make things a little bit stronger. And then on this end, it's just 
basically the outer jacket's taken off and I've tinned these leads just ready to be soldered onto here. So this is all done. I can't install this or attach this to the speaker until the speaker's in the case because there's a hole in the back of the actual speaker enclosure that this needs to go through first before it goes to the speaker. So the speaker is in very nice condition. In fact, this looks a lot like the speaker in one of the receivers that I am in the process of restoring and making another video of right now. So this is a, you know, a relatively easy clean, as you can see. This is a very, very soft rag. In fact, I use one of these for my lenses to clean the lenses off. Not the same one, obviously, but um, yeah, it's pretty much, you know, the, the speaker itself is you know, flawless at this point. And it sure does sound good in the enclosure, so I've been listening to this thing long enough to know that it doesn't vibrate or rattle or anything like that. So there's not a whole lot that really needs to be done to this. You know, I don't need to replace the speaker. Hopefully the uh, the speaker in that receiver that I'm working on is, uh, is in nice condition as this, because if it isn't, I might want to use this for that receiver. But um, it looks to be almost the identical speaker. At any rate, so what I need to do is I need to check the actual polarity of this so I can get the polarity of the cable right. Not that it's so incredibly important because I'm not running two of these at the same time, but uh, let's see here. Well, we can do this together. So I'll just grab a battery off to the side here. It's an old nine volt. I did this in my last video, so I didn't think I'd be doing it again in this one, but uh, let's do it again. Let's find out what the polarity is. So I'll attach a lead to here and to here, and I'll touch the positive to this terminal, and we'll see if the actual speaker cone pops out or goes back in, and that'll determine what the polarity is here. So, so that is the polarity. So that you can see the cone popping forward. I don't know if you can see that. All right, so here we go. So it's coming forward, so this is the polarity. So this is positive here. So I will mark the positive with the closest felt that I have. And I'll just put a little plus right here. Just like so. So now I know how to attach it. So now, of course, if I was to reverse this and go to the other side, you would see it pull in, right? So I'll go to this side here. it pull in so that's definitely the polarity so this is the positive you see they haven't marked anything here it's just you know two isolated terminals and again I'm not running two of these or any type of uh, I guess you could say uh, stereo setup with any of these things so it really isn't all that important but since I'm here I may as well just do that so what I'm gonna do now is just wipe the rest of this down I'm gonna put this back into the case and we'll take a look at this all reassembled in just a moment. And here it is all put back together. And as you can see, the paint turned out very, very nice. It really has that nice hammer tone look to it. Pardon the dust from the uh, this thing behind here. You can see here how well that finish turned out. Get the lamp a little bit closer to this here so you can see that kind of hammer tone looking finish in there. It really turned out quite fantastic. Now I'm only, you know, limited by the limitations of the box, you know, the way that the back fits on and everything is, you know, that's as good as it gets. Everything is super tight. It's just the way that these things are put together. They're put together so incredibly fast. But I did put new stainless hardware in here all the way around and I put some little feet on the bottom here. The other ones that were on here were, uh, you know, pretty bad. These are nice, just they're stick on and they have a little foam layer behind them. So they're very flexible. So if there's any, uh, you know, I guess you could say variation between sides, it won't sit and rock. So they work very nice. So I would have to say that that is a very nice improvement over the, uh, or that horrible other color that was on here before. So that, um, as you can see, lots of dust settling on it with all this light here. The paint really did turn out very, very nice. 
So the test speaker is done and you will see this in future videos being used with different receivers to display how the different communications receivers sound. If you're enjoying my videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be many more videos like this coming in the near future. We'll be taking a look at vacuum tube and solid state electronic devices alike. So if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time to do that as well. If you'd like to be notified as soon as I post a new video, don't forget to tap that bell symbol. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll also pin the link at the top of the comment section. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right there. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.